Hello everyone, the Nexus Avenger here, and I figured it was finally time I actually create a tutorial in about more or less scripting with the visualizer thing I showed off a while ago and also gave out the encoder slash web browser visualizer for. Now, there, there have been a few complaints from a few people saying that the encoder gave out incorrect results and would quickly get out of sync with the audio. Well, not to be rude or anything, but those people were using it wrong. So today I figured I'd show off the proper way to use it, as well as initially showing how most people figured they could use it, and I originally found out I couldn't use it that way. So to start, you're going to need to use the encoding feature of the web browser visualizer thing that I have linked in the description. There's information about either downloading it to your own computer and using it, or just forking it on GitHub. And there, you will also need to change the f some settings in this file named config.js to be able to enable encoding. To start, you'll need to actually encode the data and import to Roblox as a Roblox model file. It'll appear as just a module script, and you can insert it wherever you want, and the contents inside just look like a massive set of tables, each containing 63 numbers about the bar at that particular position. In terms of how you actually script of it, you need to start with a few things. One, you need to create 63 bars. Two, you need to create actual sound that goes with the bars. Three, you need to actually require the module to get back the table full of, well, tables with all the sound bar positions. And finally, you'll need to know how many times per second your data was recorded at, 30th default, and the so-called record down scale, which by default is 100. This just saves a little bit of storage space by making so all the values go from 0 to 255 down to 0 to 100 instead. If you want to do, you could turn it down to 163, use some base64 converter thing, and then decode that as it goes on, but that's not part of this tutorial. Anyway, the main way people were originally scripting with this is pretty simple. You create a for loop that goes through all of the entries in the table that you require, you get your data of, I mean, you get your table of 63 values, and then for each bar, there's 63. You just change it to the needed, the needed size. For simplicity, I just said to the negative, the position divided by the record downscale, which is 100. So if it's the max, which is 100, divided by the record downscale is 100, it just becomes negative one, so takes the full size. In terms of how it looks. Man, it's acting slow. Anyway, it kind of works, but it does get out of sync pretty fast. And that's because the encoder is not perfect. Due to CPU issues and other things, it may re just miss some frames. And also, there's no guarantee that this will ever be done in order. So, after some thinking about it before I actually made the main visualizer, I had to create a solution for this. This solution is a lot more robust and is a l just works a lot better. So the main thing you do in a while true do loop or something like that is you take the time position, multiply that by how many times per second you record it, in this case 30 for the default, and then you just you can round it up, you can round it down, which I have here, or you can just round in general by adding 0.05, etc. And that is the particular frame ID you're looking for inside the table. You then look to see if that frame is even there. If it is there, because there's a chance it may not, it just sets the size for all the bars with that particular given frame. And it does it every render step, which is 1 60th of a second, if you're running at 60 frames per second. And in terms of that actually working, well, and this is slow, it works as it should pretty much. 
I have the audio muted because I don't want to really compete with it in terms of me talking versus the volume of the sound. However, if you want to take a look at my Roblox version of the visualizer, look for the song named The Vine by Tristan, which you can actually see if you look hard enough up here at the name of the module script. And, well, there's not really that much to it in terms of the basics. The, the script that's used with the actual visualizer on Roblox is a lot more complex in terms of, well, everything. But this is the pure basics, and you can definitely modify it how you see fit for your needs. And yes, if you're access angle, you can optimize it. There's not really much else to say. Just please use it responsibly. Because, well, it does take up a lot of file space and may take a little while to transmit all the data to the client, especially if the connection's bad. There is a reason I only have like 20 or 30 minutes or so of audio in, in the uh, place instead of 12 hours as the web version is, I believe, right now. So that's pretty much it. I hope this tutorial was helpful if you're actually looking to use this for any purpose. However, it's not 100% practical due to the size of the module script. But that is, well, that's it. So, I guess, thanks for watching, and bye.